Welcome to the show. I am so thrilled to welcome back David Sharif, global autism advocate and motivational speaker. Hi, David. Welcome back. Hello. It is so great to be back again. And I enjoy every moment of being interviewed on this platform. And I just feel so grateful to take these opportunities and give the best support that I can for everybody. Well, back at you, David. I am so grateful to you for sharing your time and your talents and your expertise with us. So thank you. I'm wondering if we can really continue um, our conversation from our last interview. And at the last interview, we spoke about your top pre-employment tips um, to get the job that you want. And I wonder if today we could focus on after you get that job. What are some of your tips to find success in the workplace? That is a very good question. And there are a lot of good answers to that. But before I get on to the purpose of today's interview, I would just like to say to our audience, I hope all of you had a wonderful Thanksgiving with your turkey, pumpkin pie, cranberry sauce. Or if any of you celebrate Hanukkah, I hope you've had a wonderful Hanukkah and have gotten some wonderful gifts from loved ones and friends. Now, here we go on topic. All right, you have completed all the steps in the pre employment process. The next procedure is to wait and hear back on moving forward with what you have applied for. I am going to start it off with something that nobody likes, accepting rejections. Rejections happen. They're irritating, but they happen. I have been rejected at least 10, to 12 times, whether it was applying for an internship, other kind of job, or even a scholarship. It has happened to me. It can eat at you very quickly when you get that notification. And I agree, it eats at me as well. But the only option is to move on and keep following the same procedures you have done before when you continue to apply for new ones. But as rejections happen, there are always helpful ways to get over that kind of frustration. And some of you may have your own strategies. But here are some of mine. I like to take a walk, whether it's walking on a bridge or anywhere around my neighborhood. I would happily take the train into the main locations of where I live just to enjoy the amazing scenery of where I am. If you wish to do anything outside of exercise, you are free to treat yourself to a pizza party or any kind of tasty meal that suits you. It's a great way to celebrate the hard work that you have put in to get this far and what you are doing if something doesn't go the way you expect it to. So those are my strategies. Now here comes the next part. You have been through the rejections and now you are curious about what's going to happen. You are anxiously waiting for that opportunity to come. I am going to say, congratulations. Whether it's an internship, part-time, or full-time employment, you are now going to get the work experience that you have been waiting for. My biggest advice for you is when you enter the workforce, take every opportunity that will enable you to enhance your work ethic, especially with needed assignments. You will be asked to do certain tasks that can bore you or that you may not like or might have not learned before. That is a part of employment. 
But one way to look at it is a way to improve your weaknesses and how they will become beneficial to you as you move forward in your career. When I worked for my grandfather's company, Partners for Progressive Israel, I had to do a plethora of Excel spreadsheets based on donations and contributions to the company. And, but one of my favorite parts of the internship in working with PPI was writing documents about the political outcomes between Israelis and Palestinians. And that was a big reflection about my studies. So there was kind of a way of liking and not liking the work that I was doing back then. But after my internship with Partners for Progressive Israel, I was fortunate enough to have earned a research grant where I could continue my computer and document skills by writing blogs about my research on students in post-secondary education. But outside of that, it was an opportunity for me to do presentations at school events, as well as another event that supports autistic students in a college environment. To be more specific, I attended the College Autism Network Summit Conference in Burlington, Vermont, presenting my research. I did the same thing at two events, the Dyson Society of Fellows annual meeting, and I did it at the end of the school year showcase, displaying all of the data and points that I have researched about students with autism going to college. To my perspective, I enjoyed that research grant very much, not because of compensation, but because of my field and the career that I am pursuing. By the time college ended, I traveled to China to teach English. It was very hard. I only did it for two months. Despite how long or short it was, I learned so much about the culture and how prestigious it can be to teach and work in a foreign country. But as I recall some of what I have accomplished and what I have struggled with, I utilize my memories when I move forward into other positions. As of now, I work for a large New York City based nonprofit called AHRC, realizing potential, serving neurodiverse individuals, and building fulfilling lives. I have worked part time with them, and my employment began a month before the pandemic, so in February 2020. All of my roles have been accompanying adults out in the community revising resumes, um, other documents that will help them maintain employment and find jobs that they will be best suited for them. At least more than 50% of the people I support right now work in the retail business. Having worked on the resumes, my responsibility now is to ensure the safety of the department that I have been working for and that everyone is not just wearing a mask, but is also learning proper manners, but giving some advice and guidance to people as to how someone can handle pressured situations and multitask. And that has been one of the greatest moments of being a part of an amazing company that is local to the city I live in. All right. You are thinking about the job. You are liking what you have. 
There are certain things you may not like. But while you're doing the job, you are observing, reflecting, and approaching what is being offered to you in a mature way. And you are being honest with how you are learning the assignments that are given to you, whether you like them or not. And never forget this. Practice makes perfect. And with all the practice you do, it will make a huge difference. Here are some of my biggest tips in maintaining the job. I'm going to give three of them. And I assure you that other interviewers and other resources would say the same, but different ones. Punctuality. It is very important to be on time and on schedule when you go to work or complete an assignment. As long as you are up to date with everything that you are doing, you will be good to go. If you arrive on time, let's say five minutes earlier or so, then that's good. But if you're running five to 10 minutes late, that can never be a good sign. But let's say it like this. When I was going to work one time, I was actually three or four minutes late when I was across the street from work. And that was because of being stuck under the tunnel in the subway train. So therefore, if I ever had to tell my colleagues or if they asked me about what happened, I would say there was train traffic. So therefore, that is a fair excuse or a fair reason as to why I was being late, even though the plan is to always be punctual. Tardiness is something that would, would or will never be tolerated in employment. If you are doing something that's completely overdue, that will affect your success in the workplace. It's like back in school. You have to turn in your assignments. You have to do everything accurately and at a good time. With a lot of missing work, that will affect you very fast. Other than punctuality, discipline. Issues will come up that will prevent you from completing a task. It happens. I don't like it. And nobody does. But I am a strong believer because I believe that anything can be accomplished regardless of what happens. If you are assertive about your approach to whatever happens, it will not only support you or your own mind or well being, it will also make you happy and your colleagues happy with being there to help you in getting stuff done. I would give an example of, okay, I had to print documents, but I was having trouble with the printer. So what did I do? I spoke to my supervisor for assistance. And then I'm like, I don't think the printer is working. But then it doesn't really take long because we work it out as quick as we can. And it's not that hard. All you have to do it is behave in a professional manner when you are going through issues that are stopping you from doing stuff that has to get done. The most important and one of my favorites, being a good teammate. When you do some kind of extracurricular, you are learning to be a good teammate. You are applying that same skill when you are in the office or whatever kind of work you are doing. That means actively listening, adapting to different perspectives, and asking for clarification if you don't understand something, and being ready to help out when you are needed. That is what's called being a good team player. When I was working at Camp Havaya as a camp counselor, I met up and worked with staff in the unit I was assigned in, and we were meeting together 
to work on an activity plan, an evening activity plan for our campers in the unit. Even if no matter how long it took, our goal was to make it as fun as possible for everybody. And thankfully, we were able to accommodate not just our own perspective, but our own plans. And we were grateful and thankful for how we were able to achieve them. So work, working as a camp counselor at Camp Havaya was one of my greatest assets in being a good teammate. And I really cannot emphasize how much that opportunity meant to me. And there were definitely other ones out there, but Camp Havaya is a big example as to being a good teammate. Another thing that I kind of want to add that will certainly help you in any kind of live work. Something to help you keep yourself awake or if you're feeling tired or if you have struggled to get an amount of sleep, always bring water with you or any kind of drink that will help you stay awake. I cannot ever think or probably not think of any kind of employment status that would say, oh, you're not permitted to bring water with you. I would say that is foolish because we need to hydrate ourselves. When I go to work, I usually fill up my water bottle because I am thirsty and I need to drink to keep my mind awake and stay awake for whatever happens. Or what some of you do, you could possibly get a cup of coffee. You can stop at Dunkin' Donuts, a bagel store or Starbucks and get some tea or coffee or some kind of little breakfast that will help you stay awake before you begin work. That is something that would absolutely help you. And there is nothing against that. And I believe that your boss, supervisor, and colleagues would understand why you are bringing this kind of food and why you would need it to help you keep yourself awake before, an before another long day or when the long day is about to begin. So that pretty much concludes the tips that I provide in maintaining a successful job and being able to succeed in the workplace. To all of you in the audience who are seeking a lot of good advice about maintaining a job or learning what is a good strategy or multiple strategies for you to continue your employment, or if you wish to transition to another kind of employment, I hope that the information I provided gives you a clear understanding of what it takes to succeed in the workplace and how it will benefit your own future as you move forward. Thank you so much, David. Uh, I think your tips are so helpful, right? Uh, just to recap, punctuality, discipline, uh, you know, in that discipline, problem solving, behaving in a professional manner to solve problems, being a good teammate or a good team player, and really being able to take care and be mindful of your self-care so that you can remain attentive and productive in your work environment. I mean, these are great, great tips. Thank you so much. Um, you know, David, you really have been doing such a beautiful job in in advocating, in supporting, and promoting awareness um, for the inclusivity of uh, and diversity, I think, of neurodiverse adults and individuals in you know in this world because you are a global, you are a global um advocate. Um, you know, as you continue on this path, do you feel like all your experiences up to this point 
have led you to some of these really dream jobs, if you will, that you've seen for yourself? Absolutely. 100%. And back in the recent podcast that I did about pre-employment, I might be reiterating this, but this is just a little flashback. If I did not participate in the provided workshops or obtain a kind of work experience that would give me better support out of being a camp counselor, which kind of happened very early, I really don't think my mind or my approach or beliefs towards the world of employment would be the way it is right now. And I really cannot thank my career counselors and other coaches on all that they have given me over the years to this moment. It really means everything. I just want all of you to know that there are many ways for you to succeed out there in employment. Even if you may not know what you want to do, or if you're still finding the path that you want to move forward with. It will take a lot of time. It doesn't matter how long it will be. There is no defined answer as to the time length of what you know you want to pursue. All that you have to know is that whether you start a job in any kind of business, you will be asked to do tasks that you might be good at or you might not like but you have to take it as if you're learning something new. It's a learning curve. And if you apply that technique, you will be able to use it in other prestigious jobs that are out there waiting for you. Yeah. And being open to all of those experiences and learning from all those experiences really culminate, you know, into new opportunities. And so I just think it's really cool that, you are doing what you want to be doing. And I, and I think that that's, that's just incredible. I honestly think it's incredible. Well before high school ended, I already knew what I wanted to do. It was not just my college education. I knew what I wanted to do for my future career. Other than saying that, okay, my employment or my biggest goal and greatest asset began with being a camp counselor. That was kind of the advantage of enhancing my work ethic. But I already knew what I wanted to do. And I am pursuing that path right now, which is to be a global professional speaker for the world of neurodiversity and autism with many speaking engagements as possible that I could do. And I am following the footsteps of Three or four of my idols, I'm not going to name them. Well, I could actually name some. My very good friend, Dr. Stephen Shore, another good friend of mine who has actually met my parents, Thomas Island, another one I have mentioned all the time, Dr. Carrie Magro, who is absolutely legendary and is most certainly becoming the next Temple Grandin. And most of all, Haley Moss, the first openly autistic lawyer. Those autism self-advocates and those on the spectrum have really rewarding careers. And what they are doing, just like me, they are educating people about autism and inclusiveness in any kind of environment that they are in. I've e they've even written some publications, whether it's a book or a novel or something online. I have written a book already, plus some JDPs, and I have other publications that I'm going to be writing. Okay, just to get back, JDP means or stands for Jewish Disability Perspective. So technically, it would be published by the company I'm writing it with. Some people may think it's a publication or some may not. It just depends on how others look at it. But to my perspective, I look at it as a publication. 
And I like where I am because I knew very on, very early on what I wanted to do. And there is no way I'm going to step away from that. And I know that moving forward, I plan to pursue another educational degree. I'm just not sure when. I definitely know with what I want to do. I am just not entirely sure which specific field in that topic it would be. Yeah, that's awesome, David. What an awesome career that you're having, that you're allowing to evolve, uh, following your dreams. It's fantastic. Thank you so much, David, for always being so forthcoming with your information and your desire and passion and love to help others. So thank you for doing that on this channel. We appreciate you. Oh, thank you very much. And before I step away, if I am not back on another show within now or hopefully sometime moving forward, I wish you all a happy belated Hanukkah. I don't know how to phrase it if some of you celebrate Hanukkah like I said before. A happy Kwanzaa. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. And most of all, to every single one of you, I wish all of you a wonderful holiday season. Enjoy your cookies, all the fun that you will have with your family. And I cannot wait to be back here again to give more information about what I am pursuing. So awesome. I wish all of you happy holidays. <laughs>